You can. Me? Welcome in. <laughs> Happy Monday. Welcome yeah. in to SWB. Lauren Leal, Jeff Michael, and we are back at Christian's tailgate. It feels good to be home. Bam. Yes. Last week we were home doing it from our houses. <laughs> it was a little different. It was um, fun. It was fun. I got I got a lot of different responses saying, you know, different atmosphere, which was cool. But it, it's just it, I love being here. I love being live like in, in a, a sports bar doing the show. I can't uh, I can never get over getting this Red Bull. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Uh, thank you, Jeff. It is always sitting here ready yeah. for me to go. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate it. Cheers to you on a Monday with a lot of news that took place Ooh, over the weekend tons. and to start the week. Jason is back with us. He's the reason why we're back at Christian's tailgate. Jason, you were out of town. I yeah. forget where you were. I was in Philadelphia. We know he was in Philly because remember he said he was watching the show from the airport. That's Phil right. Philadelphia. That's Philadelphia. Right. <laughs> and Orlando. Okay, I was gonna say because it wasn't a connecting or something, or you were no, going to I was places. going straight. For, yeah, I was going straight from Philadelphia to Orlando, and then I flew from Orlando back here. I actually stayed, so it wasn't a connecting flight. I I was in Philly, then I was yeah. in Orlando, yeah. and now I'm back. Okay, so you saw some of your teams play. That's the reason. Yes, you my team played preseason games in when? Philadelphia on Saturday, on, on Sunday, and then in Orlando on Wednesday. Any wins? <laughs> Uh, they won the second game that I went to. They tied the other ones. So. I know. J if you well, go yeah, to Jason, you got to experience. You got to see that. <laughs> you go to his social media profile. Jason was doing a little bit of drinking with these guys. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <it's> just, <laughs> just just a little bit. It was. A, it looked like a lot of fun. I was a little jealous. Not gonna lie. Yeah. I was but, like, damn. Um, speaking of, but uh, speaking of football, I happened to be at a casino in Philadelphia waiting to go to the airport, and lo and behold, I'm at the craps table and two. Two guys that were like kind of tall, and you know, they went down. They threw a ton of money on the table, and I'm uh -oh. like, "Whoa, look at these guys!" Big and shots. then another guy come up, goes, "Hey, man, they play for the Eagles." Awesome, what? Eagles players. That's nice. crazy. Literally right before training camp started this week. So. Wait, so you can gamble legally in Philadelphia? Like yes, a there's a there's a casino right next to um, the stadium. You know, they've got the uh, Lincoln Financial Field, and then they've got the what's the f field that f the Phillies play in? I don't know the uh, name of the Yeah, field. but it's on the other side. There's a casino right there. Oh, nice. Right. Philly. Uh, but man, look, so gambling, obviously, huge, huge deal in sports now. They have, they actually have casinos in in stadiums now, like in Chicago. The Cubs have a, a gambling oh, casino. You can do, like you can sports do live book? sports betting in arenas now, dude. It is absolutely so insane. are you looking at Philadelphia Eagles Stadium? That's Lincoln Financial Field, yes. if that's what you're yes. thinking. Yeah, he's talking okay. about it's, it's, Yeah, Phillies. it's on – Oh, the Phillies. The Phillies My ones bad. is like right next to it. And um, I wish I could have gone to the Phillies game because they were playing. And that yeah. would have been really cool. You know, chalk those uh, ballparks off the list. Eagles know. got high expectations this year. Jalen Hurts, uh, man, they obviously went to the Super Bowl last year, lost to Pat Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. But uh, Jalen Hurts and that whole whole squad in Philadelphia, they're looking to go back. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not going to count them out. They're going to be good. Uh, it's just hard to repeat. It's hard to get back to the Super Bowl. We need to get business cards. I could have handed them to him. There you go. Ah, yeah. right. yes. They I'm could have been it. in partnership with us. I remember oh. one time, Jeff, a long time ago, you had a partner, a potential merchandising partner. Yeah, I, I actually. Someone really big. I, I still do have some uh, sports with balls hats. I have a hat. I have a hat. <laughs> I'll get some merchandise out there. We start doing what we're doing because the numbers are incredible right now. Thank you guys. Everybody out there is listening. YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. Thank you guys so much for paying attention to Sports with Balls. I'm Jeff Michael. She is Lauren Leal. Like she said, a lot of sports went on this weekend. Oh, yeah. And, of course, today there's a lot more going on, so let's get to it. All right, let's get to it. So the big deal was... NFL training camps are in full effect and full force and the huge headline Jeff I don't know about you every station I turn on in my car every TV channel I see is talking about Aaron Rodgers and how he how Sean Payton <laughs> disrespected Nathaniel Hackett which is obviously the offensive coordinator with the Jets now so I gotta ask your opinion about it and what do you yeah. think of Aaron Rodgers even mentioning this because I have my takeaways of, of what I think it means but go ahead on your thoughts no I, I like that Aaron Rodgers is sticking up for his coaches I really do I just Aaron is Aaron look we got something out of Aaron Rodgers right so that's a plus like usually he's very stoic and very non-committal to even doing interviews at all so at least he gave us some the only reason this is a really really huge story is because he did give us some content and this is what we love we're like yes thank you so much for talking about Sean Payton in this kind of way I, I don't know what to take out of this. I don't know because Sean Payton, 
knows Aaron Rodgers very well. They know each other. They've been in the NFL for a very long time. I'm not really sure if this was a shot at Sean or Aaron Rodgers just sticking up for one of his coaches. So here's what I think. You said we got a lot on Aaron Rodgers. Well, Aaron Rodgers gave up some. I don't know if you remember. He he negotiated his contract to yep. give up 33.7 mil, I believe it was. Weird. And that's crazy to show his commitment yep. to the New York Jets. He's looking happy. He's looking comfortable. He's looking like this is his team. I got them on my back. And that's why I think he took such offense to Nathaniel Hackett. But take all of that out of the picture. And I think what we have here is Sean Payton not attacking Nathaniel Hackett, Sean Payton trying to get some clout back to Russell Wilson because of how poorly he played last year, saying, okay, you know, it was Nathaniel Hackett, it was, uh, you know, his offensive calls, the crowd apparently at those games were counting down the clock to get the ball out, which is so embarrassing because obviously Nathaniel Hackett was over the offense. So uh, he was talking about that, and I think it's it's, it's more so speaking, hey – we need to trust what we have going on right now. I'm going to put my best foot forward, and so is Russell Wilson, who does need to take a little bit of accountability. But yeah, and that's what I that's what I took out of this. Yeah, to your point, he's trying to stick up for Russell because Russell had such an abysmal season last year. Both guys sticking up for their teams, right? Like that's what I'm getting out of this. That both guys just sticking up for their teams. They're going into the season. We are three days away from an NFL game being on your television. That's nuts. Right? Like, <laughs> that's that's and, wild. And let's be honest. Nobody's going to sit there and watch this game. Nobody. No starters are playing in this game. It is a JV squad that's going to be out there for both sides. Uh, but it will be – everybody will have it on. Mm-hmm. You will have it on. Nobody's watching. We're not, we're not going to come back on Sports with Balls and give you stats about what these guys did. It's just that NFL will be back on your TV from every weekend there forward. Yeah. And that is impressive. By the way, fantasy football, guys – Coming up pretty soon. Lauren, I sent you an email today about joining. Uh, I think I saw it. (laughs) I think I saw it. Lauren's going to be in a league. Mm. I can't wait. So fantasy football. How much does that cost me? Uh, You, nothing. But everybody else, something. So. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> but so fantasy football, we'll have a fantasy football special probably in about two weeks. Probably right around mid-August before everybody starts. Really well, I'm doing glad you told me that so I can start like really yep. uh, researching my yep. guys, yep. my teams. Speaking of the Denver Broncos, do you see the terrible news they got today? Man. Uh, the Denver Broncos, the terrible news they got today. Hey, Jason, will you check the sound again? I'm, I'm getting the same complaints that they can barely hear us. Uh, so we'll see if we can do this this voice thing again. Did it? Did it? Because I'm pretty sure they're going through your mic. No, we're good. OK, well, sorry. So if you're having any audio issues, very, very sorry if you hear that. Uh, all right. All right. Noah Paul, appreciate you joining the show. Three days I've been to an NFL game last season. All right. Well, three days NFL season starts, like I said. But back to what I was saying, Denver Broncos, terrible terrible news today on one of their wide receivers that missed almost all of last season uh is going to miss again another another uh full season this year broncos head coach sean payton says the team fears wide receiver tim patrick suffers an achilles injury in today's practice and russell wilson who we were just talking about loses one of his top wide receivers Ha, huh, how ironic Sean Payton comes out with all of that <laughs> yesterday and then apologizes for the comment, by the way, which no yeah. one ever put that out there. They're just talking about the initial statement that Sean Payton put out. But that is very unfortunate. Uh, Russell Wilson needs a bounce back season, so he yes. needs the good targets. And I, I, I'm just now getting breaking into uh, breaking those guys down since we will be having an NFL show here in a couple of weeks. But Fantasy that's a football. loss. That's yeah, a loss that's right a now. Huge loss. One and that, but that's what we see in training camp, though. We we see the guys that are going to get injured. Uh, I believe one from uh, the Colts. Huge. There's a lot of Colts drama right now. I don't know if we want to get into that yet, but there's injuries going around, and it's training camp. That's what happens. There's a ton of them. A lot of big injuries that are coming up. And that's like you said, it's what happens. I don't know how you avoid them, but every year it seems like the guys are like, oh, there's a bunch of injuries. No, this is the same as every year. This happens every 
Joe some Burrow, of them are just from the big guys, and some of them are, yeah. you know, from second, third string. <laughs> Joe Burrow being the biggest one so far. Yeah. Joe Burrow went down this past week, and uh, we find out that you, that it's a calf strain. He's going to be out three weeks. I highly doubt you see Joe Burrow in the preseason. So I don't, this is I don't what's so interesting. So the Bengals are trying to save their butt, and they brought in a guy from the XFL, which is like, yay! I applaud the X. I love the XFL because it gives these guys another chance. So they bring in. Um, I cannot find it in my notes, uh, but they bring in another guy and we'll just see how that goes with the Bengals. So you don't think that Joey Burrow is going to be in the preseason, but no. come regular season starts. Yeah, I, I think he'll be ready. He should be ready for the regular season. They're, it's a calf strain, which is not, look, that's no small injury. It's going to take a month, but luckily it happened in the first week and not the third or fourth week, right? Mm -hmm. So it looks like he'll have time to get back in shape. I'm not sure if that's an out of shape thing or just cuz it was he was just scrambling out to the right, not even running that hard and just pulled up on his calf. So mm -hmm, if mm -hmm. these guys don't stay in somewhat football shape and then try to come back to training camp and play an NFL game, they're going to have injuries. For and sure. we're seeing a lot of stuff happen today, well over the past week already about guys getting injured and uh, it's terrible. For sure, for sure. So the guy that they brought up um this took place on Saturday. They auditioned two quarterbacks that could be stepping in potentially for Cincinnati just because of this injury, this calf injury with Burrow. 26-year-old uh, Sinnott, his last name, he's from the San Antonio Brahmas of the XFL, like I said. <laughs> so he's coming from Texas. Good job. Okay, good luck in Ohio, in Cincinnati, Ohio. It's his Tom Brady opportunity. <laughs> it's okay. Not no, I'm just kidding. He's not Tom. I was about to say, well, all right. <laughs> Tom came in off an injury and then basically never left the football field. Pretty much. So, there you Pretty go. much. But that was regular season, uh, and we're not going to speculate. Like Joe Burrow should be ready for the regular season. But going back to what you were saying with the Indianapolis Colts, the issue is... I, I can't. Where do you want to start on what's going on with the Indianapolis Colts? This is insane. Oh my gosh, the <laughs> drama. Oh, sorry if I just blew your speakers <laughs> out, but guys, uh, the drama in Indianapolis. Wow. Like, this is crazy. So it's just Colts drama. We talk, we know about the running backs in general, yep. wanting to get more money, get more years, you know, all the, all the things that they came together and had last weekend. Well, now you have Jonathan Taylor who is a huge mess. He wants a trade request. The owner says, no, we're not going to grant that to you. We need you here. And then he, the Colts want to take him off of the non-injury playlist, but he doesn't want that because he says he has a back injury that took place this off season. And if he gets put on that list, then he will lose money come the season and he doesn't play. So it's just like, what's going on? Going back to the injuries. Absolutely. Zach Moss. Yep. Their other running back that they were leaning on without Taylor in the picture gets a broken arm in practice today. Yep. So there's just a lot of drama. What's going to happen? Are they going to – I don't know. Uh, what do you make of all of this, Jeff? There's a lot of talk about Jim Irsay, the Colts owner, kind of disrespecting Jonathan Taylor – and, and some of the things that he said, I, I'm not going to sit here and say which direction I want to go with this, right? Like the NFL owners have made it clear that the running back position is not as important as it was before. And you and I have gone over this. We went over it last last week on this show about the top running backs and what they get paid to win the Super Bowl. It's just not a lot. So the running back position, unfortunately, is devalued a ton right now. And, mm -hmm. and it just is what it is. And Jonathan Taylor has been. The key to the Indianapolis Colts the last couple of years, right? He did get hurt, so that that's on him. But before that, that's I mean, he, on him. He, well, it I mean, happened. Well, it I mean, happened. It, it's an injury. It's, yeah, it's an injury. And and look, he won me my fantasy league the year before that. The guy is absolutely incredible. Jonathan Taylor definitely is incredible. But I believe that these you're not going to force these NFL owners' hands. I I, I know it sounds weird. To, like, I'm not sticking up for the NFL owners. And I'm not sticking up for the players. Either I mean, one, but you're not going to force their hands. This isn't the NBA. This will not be a player-run league where you get these ridiculous contracts and people can just sit on their ass. It's not going to happen. I mean, we saw Saquon Barkley just agree. Yep. He lost two, I, two or three grand on, to, or, I mean, mill on top of what they initially offered him when he want, he was fighting for a bigger contract. But I think it was twelve or thirteen mil. It went down to ten. He said, "Okay, I comply. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play with you guys." And like, like to your point, as far as the owners go, 
it's not a player run league. They may request some trades, but more often than not, no, they want what they want and they're going to have you play on their team. Yeah, and you just look, Naheem Hines, who was the running back for the Colts that was took the place of Jonathan Taylor, got traded, right? So they're in a really tough spot right now. And I don't know if Jonathan Taylor is sitting at home laughing and going, yeah. Like they don't have a running back. You're going to have to pay me. Oh, he's watching all of this unfold. <laughs> so I, he is I walk in, you got to figure this out because at the really, really heart of this, Anthony Richardson, the Florida quarterback that they drafted, their number one pick, is sitting in the locker room every day going, all right, well, who's my running back? Mm -hmm. And they've got to start a season with this Anthony Richardson kid who's got all the pressure in the world on him with no running back and with the owner arguing with their favorite player. Like, let's be honest, Jonathan Taylor is the heart and soul of the Indianapolis Colts right now. He has been for the last few years. He's if been their workhorse. And now you have the owner and the workhorse going at it. And it, it is a mess in Indy. And if you're a Colts fan, I would love to hear from you. What do you want? What do you want? Do you, right. want, do you want Jonathan Taylor to make $18 million a year? Not if he's not going to be I out there. I don't know. Like, it'd be, like, I'm sure that's what he wants. I'm sure that's what a lot of these running backs want. 13, 14, 15, sees, that seems to be the, the going rate for the – the higher end running backs like Saquon Barkley, Josh Jacobs, who's still unsigned. I mean, Christian McCaffrey is the highest one. Yes. He's what, 15? 15, round yeah. 15. So that, that's what I'm saying. 13, 14, 15 right there. That's your market. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they want more. And it, I'm sorry. It's just not going to happen. That The game is changing. Take what you can get. And, and like I said, it's not going to move in the direction the players want because it's not a player run league. Jeff, try and stop trying to make fetch happen. It's not going to happen. <laughs> not uh, Bean happen. Girls reference there for oh, you. Right. Uh, speaking of movies, did you happen to see any of the box office movies that uh, oh. happened that that dropped over the past couple of weeks in Oppenheimer and also Barbie? Barbie being the big one, right? Of course. <laughs> I think I think they both Jason, made a lot of money, Jason's but of course laughing. Barbie trumped it. Jason's no. laughing. Did you go see Barbie, Jason? No. Okay. I'll no, he was no, in no. Philly uh, with I, the I, with the Eagles players. Yeah, I, nationwide movie. I haven't seen it, but I am going to go see Oppenheimer on Thursday. I heard okay. Oppenheimer was good. I yeah. believe that's a I, movie I rent when I'm at home in my bed, though. I don't know if I'm well, a Nolan it's historical. Fan. Like, I always go you, watch. I always okay. go watch. Well, I, I, I like the director. So. What I thought was funny is that they released like the girliest girl movie and like the manliest, not the manliest but like a superman well it's the perfect combination guy. of like we're gonna go watch your movie then we're gonna watch my movie <laughs> <laughs> would you do that though if your girlfriend said hey will you watch i'll go watch this with you if you I'll watch the movie with me 100 i go watch it and apparently okay, people guys like, y'all are learning well apparently uh, with the I'm barbie movie uh, they uh, apparently oh, some God. people told me it's actually like for from a guy's perspective it's not that bad <laughs> well <laughs> i heard we ken is the villain <laughs> which one are we seeing first <laughs> so, see there there's the argument like yes of course Ooh, well, i want to see barbie. now that's a tough one <laughs> that's what i'm saying so there's gonna be an argument somewhere it's like so we'll go see both of them which one are we going to first? <laughs> I want to see Barbie. I'm not going to lie. So you would be okay with seeing Barbie first? Yeah. All right. Would I you? Think I, I think I could go for that. Well, I think like... I'd probably you, you do it the, I'd probably do it the other... I'd probably do it the other way because I think Oppenheimer is more of a... Because of like the intensity of it, it's like the Barbie movie would be a kind of like a oh I need I need to get that out of my head. Okay, this is just something uh, that's a little bit more light. All right, guys, if you're out there, what movie? <laughs> if you're going to see both the movies with your significant other, guys and girls, whichever way you want to do it, are you going to see Barbie first? This is a this is a one night event. You got to go see two movies. You see a Barbie first or Oppenheimer? Wow, you're Which eating one? a lot of popcorn. Wow. You're, you're getting sodium oh up at the movies. Oh, my gosh, dude. I, I, I've, I've been off the gym for three days, and I, if I told you what I ate in those three days, it would blow your mind. It That's was, what, it was that is the problem with, like, crash courses, whether you, like, you go on a diet and wow. you take something out completely or you do something completely different. It's like, oh, my gosh, i got to have it back in my life after a week. <laughs> you got to do it slowly. Frozen pizza, Chinese food, McDonald's, breakfast tacos. Is your cholesterol six, okay? Is six, the question. Six M and M ice cream cookies. <laughs> Look, Jason's like hell yeah. It was. I went on a festival. Six. <laughs> they come in six packs, right? Like a box that I oh, ate. Oh man, that sounds good. So it was so good. And I was watching a movie. Yeah, there you yeah. go. <laughs> what movie were you watching? Uh, well, I'm sorry. I started a series called, uh, it starts with an S. Uh, I, I texted. Stranger uh, Things. No, it's, it's <laughs> four letters. Uh, this uh, Man, hold on. Let me. It's okay. Speaking of movies, uh, you put it in our rundown, Jeff. Someone 
oh, that we all know and grew up with, somewhat at least, passed away earlier today. Oh, yeah. Oh, Pee Wee Herman. Yes. Yeah, cancer. Yeah. And you know, look. That's what it, okay, I wasn't sure what the cause he was. He passed at 70 from cancer, and there's a lot of issues with him because some people, he, he got caught. We all know what happened to him a long time ago in a movie theater, one of them X rated places or whatever. I don't, and but he that's had, okay. He had, a, he had a children's show, so it was very controversial, but apparently in his, in his, Dying days or weeks or months or whatever, he apologized and wanted to make it public. And uh, was it was a was a bad bad death for him. Uh, of course, cancer took Pee Wee Herman from us, but uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> bad rap for Pee Wee Herman and a terrible name, terrible name. Yeah, but he had the best joke after all that scandal. Was. Oh yeah, what when was he it? went back on, he was introduced. He was doing some award show or something. He was in the public. Comes out as Pee Wee Herman and says. Anybody heard any good jokes lately? Uh, yeah. oh. Oh, cuz he knew he was going to get uh, hammered on it. Oh, by the way, this the, Speaking, yeah, the show yeah, is yeah, called yeah. the show is called Silo. Silo. Okay. And it's on it's on Apple uh, Apple TV and it is fantastic. Really? I watched all 10 episodes and they're like an hour and 15 minutes long. Okay. <laughs> Just one after another. Yeah, I, I was in bed for a little bit. All uh, right. I had a, I had a fun Friday evening. That sounds like my Friday evening was full of laughs and crude jokes i went to a comedy show on friday there evening um all right guys welcome back into swb we got a little sidetracked from football which That's we all love but uh we had to see so if you if you go watch a movie which one are you seeing barbie or oppenheimer let us know in the comments right now and of course you can do that on any of our social media platforms they are listed right there below um at lauren double underscore leal at jeff michael underscore four two two sports with ball as well we're there Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, you got it. We have it. Yep. So we're going to get back into some of the other injuries and a guy who had the biggest injury this past season. Um, we finally saw a resurgence from him today in practice. And I'm talking about DeMar Hamlin of the Buffalo Bills. Uh, first time in pads since the cardiac arrest on the field. So, I mean, to me, that was just like such a light and such a humbling feeling for and I'm just watching from afar on my tube like that was so cool to see him get up and and then talk about it to the media afterward just saying you know like I'm, I'm just blessed to be here God's great like here I am but I'm also trying to compete, compete at the highest level it's not just about me being here like I'm also I, I want to win yeah I I'm just worried about I know we're all gonna feel it <clears throat> like when he comes out the first time he gets hit or he hits somebody it's going to be very interesting it's a dangerous game we all know that we and we yet people forget about what happened to Tua Tagovailoa during the season last year it was miserable to watch that guy just try to get up and walk off the field we're going to have major injuries this year there's going to be concussions we're going to see some things that are very very brutal because it's a brutal sport but DeMar Hamlin Obviously, the biggest thing last year, he did pass away for a brief time on the field. They brought him back to life, and now he's back on the field in practice with the Buffalo Bills trying to earn a starting position back. They're going to have him on the team. There's no possible way he doesn't make the team. So, DeMar Hamlin will be on the Buffalo Bills. I just – you worry about him hitting and and – I wonder what's in his head, right? Like you wonder, is he going to try to hit somebody again that hard? There's a split second right. He was the one who got someone. hit. He was the one who got hit whenever he went down. But um, there's two people colliding, right? So he was going one way, the, the receiver was going the other way, and then you you just you wonder if he's going to make a split second decision that might affect him on tackling. Who knows? But yeah, it was great to see him. Great to see him giving praise to the Lord and the way he, he handled himself, and he's glad to be back. So good for him for making mm -hmm. the, the field, and uh, you know hopefully he's healthy. Uh, sorry, guys, if you're watching us live or if you watch this in the future and we're waving our hands around, there are a million flies going on. I don't I don't know why they all just decided to come in here today. They're weird. never in here. Yeah, we've uh, never had flies. It's weird. Uh, but uh, Chewy, what's up? He said he Oppenheimer is way too long. Yeah, I heard it's three hours. So be ready to buckle up, and if you're going to watch Barbie before or after that, <laughs> so it's going to be a long night or day so for we're you. Do, we're doing Oppenheimer first. <laughs> if it's yeah. three hours long, that is for sure. Man, wow, interesting. Uh, and then Fire X, uh, my son, uh, commented on the show. How funny is that? And he says, Barbie, 
That's what he wants to go see first, I guess. Wow. All right, um, on to more sports. <laughs> uh, Thursday night, New York Jets take on the Cleveland Browns in the Hall of Fame game where you just got back from. So I cannot wait to see that on my television. I don't think any starters are going to play in that game. I don't even know if there's a spread for that game as of yet. Uh, yes, there is. I think it's Cleveland plus one, or Jets plus one and a half. Wow. Wow. So there you go. So is that going to be part games. of Hard Knocks? Oh, I'm sure they'll be there. Yeah, for yeah? sure. Definitely. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, this game, do, 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 do a lot of you tune into it? Do a lot of you no, watch it's just, it? No, it's just on TV. You just you put it on TV and cook dinner. Because it'll be 7 o'clock. What, what time is that game on? 7 o'clock. Uh, yeah, 7 o'clock Central. Kay. So 8 p.m. Eastern. Okay. So you just kind of put it on your TV and uh, football's on. You're, you're you just know, happy to it. see football, right? Yeah. Like you don't really care. You just, you just want a, football on TV. And the, the whole thing is to, it's the introduction to the Hall of Fame guys. Like there will be a bunch of them that come out there at halftime and they'll be interviewing them all through the game. It's just fun to have the NFL, the jerseys, the whole thing back on your television on Thursday. And it just means from here on out, every weekend, you will have football on your television. Gosh, we are so, so much hype, people. We love the hype of it all. I know people are like, I just want to see a good matchup, and I love good matchups, but, like, I am about the hype, too. So, like, yes, this this is this is exciting. So, uh, we're sticking with the NFL? No, let's go NFL. to baseball. Let's all go right, to baseball. we got some baseball. <laughs> we got some baseball. So, MLB trade deadline ends tomorrow, 6 p.m. Uh, Eastern. So, Right now, we saw the huge move, and I mentioned at the beginning of the show, the top of the show, that Mets, they made a huge trade. Max Scherzer going to the Rangers. The Rangers are going all in, guys. Yep. They are going all in. They saw what they did um, already leading up to the halfway point of the season, and now they are making trades to make this happen. Um Jeff, as far as the Max Scherzer trade goes, does he really elevate this team and bring them to the World Series, I mean, Cy no, the, Young winner. Look, the bigger trade for me from the for the Rangers was the Montgomery trade. He's pitching way better than Scherzer is, and, and like you said, the Rangers, the Texas Rangers, are going all in. Did they just get swept by the San Diego Padres this weekend? Yes. So they're only one game up in the division versus the Houston Astros. Basically, it's a two horse race over there. But yeah, they are in. They are all in. And if you think about the Mets. The mess is what a lot of the people – they had at the beginning of the season, they had Jacob deGrom, Max Scherzer, and uh, – uh, who else? Oh, and uh, Justin Verlander. Yeah, they and still now, do. Well, no. deGrom's hurt. Scherzer's, no, I mean, they still have Verlander. Yeah, Verlander. For the still, moment. Yeah, for the moment. For and the moment. We'll get into that in a second. So the, the Mets have – a year ago, you were like, wow, the Mets are really making a push and they're going to be amazing. Their lineup looked good. Their pitching looked good. Now, if you're a Mets fan – it's, it's a disaster. It's like the Knicks. And you're just wondering, what direction are they going? Meanwhile, in Texas, on the offseason, they spent the most money out of anybody the last two offseasons. Mm -hmm. And now you see them leading their division, and they just bolstered their starting pitching lineup. So mm -hmm. they actually – I'm not a big – the Max Scherzer thing, I get it. But he hasn't pitched that well in the playoffs. It, you do want to give the ball to him. He can still make some pitches, but he is a shell of what he was before. The Montgomery pickup, that is – Big. Those guys, they can pitch. And I'm I'm worried about this team if they land anybody else. <laughs> I mean, if they're not done, well, they're going to have problems keeping these guys. I understand that. This might just be a rental. But, man, they have got some firepower in their bats, and now they have some – Really, really legit pitchers. Absolutely. And you talk about the money that they spent this offseason. Max Scherzer, now he gets to exercise the 43.3 mil player option for 2024 after this season um, with the Rangers. But like we said, the Rangers are going all in. And you look to the other side of it with the Mets. The Mets had an incredible season last year. I look at their record. They were 101 in 61. Yeah. So they won 101 games. Guys, heading into Saturday night's game when Max Scherzer got traded, you know how they're doing this season? 49 and 54. Brutal. A completely different season from last year. So the Mets uh, say goodbye to them. And that leads us to the next question mark of this trade. Oh, the other pitcher there. Hello, Justin Verlander. Oh. No stranger to us. So Justin Verlander, where is he going to go? We're seeing different reports that Atlanta, the Braves, were really looking at him. But a huge push with some money and potential LA Dodgers. The LA Dodgers are always trying to make moves. They're always trying to be in it, just like the Astros the last six years. 
So we'll see where he goes. Uh, the trade deadline ends to or tomorrow. or tomorrow at six p.m. Or he just stays stays well, with the Mets. Well, here's the thing: next year he got paid a lot, and his 2025 contract is pretty friendly. That's and this is it. Like he wanted to sign with the Mets to make his last run. And he wanted to have a nice little con. This is the end. Like, he's 40 years old. So this is what he had to say. This is the end. This is on uh, if Max Scherzer deal was made him question his comments. So look, this is what he said. Mm-hmm. How do you not think about it? When you see that that happens, you can't help but think, what's in store for next year? It changed my opinion a little bit. And when you see that from Justin Verlander, you're like, wow, I think he wants to trade. I mean, why Why does he want to stay in Mets? A sub-500 team, they're actually selling. DeGrom's hurt. Uh, you just saw Max Scherzer get out, and, and they're, they're losing players. This, I don't think he wants to spend the glory days of his career with the New York Mets. I think that he may move today or tomorrow. The question, if you're in Houston, which where we are now, I'm being Astros fan, and of course you are, is he going to go to Houston? Will he go back to Houston, Texas? I've heard this rumor, Jeff. And I heard Verlander, I don't even know if the fa- the fans would welcome him back, but it was kind of sour when he left. So there are some altering kind of discussions on that front. But as far as the ownership goes, I, you, you know, we've never seen Jim Crane do this. We, 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 he does yeah, not spend a money. Lot of money. He doesn't do that. Uh-uh. If anything, like maybe like a last minute, like, oh, I'll, I'll top that bid. To get Justin Verlander, it's just going to be for a year, though. Well, the thing, and, the thing is and, with the Astros, like you said, and they, he never does good in the post. Yeah, but he's always he's, lost in the got postseason. Str- he's got struggles in the postseason as well. I just you want the Houston Astros are on a lot of people's radar right now, and they will be for the next twenty four to forty twenty four hours, right? So it, in about twenty four hours from now, the trade deadline will be over. So the Houston Astros, there's a lot of teams that made moves, and the one team that hasn't, we've brought, the, the Houston Astros only brought in one relief pitcher. And it's like, a guy who we had a couple years ago that didn't do much for us in Kendall Graveman. I was curious why they went out and got him. And they haven't made a splash. And if they don't, you just kind of wonder if that offense with the Houston Astros, which is very potent, but can't you need pitching in the postseason. You have to have pitching in the postseason. And if you're going to rely on Hunter Brown and J.P. France to carry you through the postseason, I believe the Astros might be in trouble. That's why if they if they could just land, I wanted Stroman. I look as an Astro fan, I want Marcus Stroman from the Cubs. That guy is phenomenal. Plus his name is Stro Man Astro. Like get it? Like, <laughs> you come said on, you, you said that. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. I mean, I just play on words. And if we can't get Marcus Stroman, Verlander's fine. He can come back in here. We can do the same thing again. And hopefully make it make a run at it. But I I fear that if the Astros don't make one more move pitching, that that we're going to be in trouble. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna throw something at you on the flip side of that. Because okay. I just saw this a little bit ago, that Juan Soto from the San Diego Padres is only at plus 200 from Vegas to come to the Astros. He is on the block. If the Astros could somehow pull off Juan Soto, oh my, like that lineup, I don't need, you don't need Verlander. <laughs> so, so. If, if he can hit like, like his old self, it's not like he's been killing it. But, you know, the big move last year, right, was Juan Soto. It could be the big move again this year. Okay, I hear you. I hear you. I go back to the money situation yep, and yep, who yep. you're going to trade for him. McCormick. It would no, be, yeah, no, I no like, I like Chaz. we're not getting rid of Chaz. Yeah. I like Chaz. Yeah, look, the Astros do have prospects. It, it would be a hell of a move, but again, on to exactly what you were saying, the only way... I don't even know how this would happen because they won't sign him to a long-term deal. It, the Astros just don't do that. They don't do it. The Rays maybe could do it. The Dodgers maybe could do it. These big money teams maybe. I just the Astros don't like spending that much money, and he's a quarter billion dollar man. Mm-hmm. And I don't I don't know if the Astros are going to pick all that up. Yeah, I don't know. I, uh, what I do know is what I saw over the weekend, and the Astros smacking. Home runs. It was like a home run derby, thanks to all those sliders being thrown, those like 50, 60 mile pitches. Uh, it was so simple. Did you see that on Saturday night, Jeff? Yeah, unfortunately, the Astros lost that series. It was a great one game. Ah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> then they lost on Sunday, but it was so fun to watch that. It was like 16 to 2 or 3. Something here's, crazy. Like uh, that. Here's or 17. Some, here's some moves that happened earlier today. The Mariners ship closer at Seawall to Arizona Diamondbacks. The Brewers are acquired outfielder Kanaha from the Mets. Cubs get third baseman and secure Condelario from the Nationals. Giants bolster their depth, acquiring Pollock from the Seattle Mariners. 
The Rays add right-handed pitchers Cavalli, which is a big one for the Rays, and a trade with the Cleveland Guardians. And right now, after that, you're just looking at a bunch of other kind of no-names, but those are the big ones so far. We are going to see a couple more splashes. This is not over. Like I said, you got a little less than 24 hours until this thing's over, and there's going to be a few more big moves. The Rays are trying to win a World Series. The Rangers are trying to win a World Series. The Dodgers, who have the, almost the exact same record as the Astros, they're in it. The Astros still need to make a move. These are all top-notch teams that need to make a move. And you mentioned the Atlanta Braves a second ago. Mm -hmm. Max Freed, one of their incredible pitchers, could return to them as early as this weekend in Wrigley Field, which that, that's, I, I don't think Atlanta needs another pitcher. And if he comes back and he comes back in full form, Atlanta is also in there for a World Series. Mm -hmm. It's going to be interesting to watch and see what these teams do. But I, just because we're in Houston, obviously we love the Astros, but I think all eyes are on Houston right now. Yeah. Are they going to make a move to try to make this World Series push? Because I believe that, yes, they'll get into the playoffs. But to go deep into the playoffs, they're going to need another starting pitcher. No, I agree. I agree. Pitching has been the issue since the, you know, since the start of the season. Urquidy goes out um, one after the other. Just injuries pile up. On the other side, you know, Jordan Alvarez finally coming back. Jose Altuve is back. Um, and they got some good swings this weekend due to those uh, very slow pitches. But the pitching is the issue. And I think this has kind of been – the the starting rotation, the question marks for the past couple of seasons, always heading into the post is like, who's going to get those spots? Well, now we got to fill those spots with just guys in general. Yep. We need better pitching. Uh, speaking of this weekend, we'll go back to baseball, football here in a minute. Did you happen to watch any of the fights that went on? There was an incredible UFC card and one of the best boxing matches I've seen in a long time. Did you watch any fighting this weekend? Absolutely not. I didn't think so. Terrence Crawford. <laughs> I don't know if you know who Terrence Crawford is or, or, or Errol Spence Jr., but, man, this was a boxing match for the ages. It was built up to where Errol Spence was supposed to really give this guy, Terrence Crawford, uh, a run for his money, but it turns out Crawford – from the second round on, demolished this kid, ended up KOing him in the ninth and wins the undisputed welterweight championship, which has uh, never been done before. So congratulations to Terrence Crawford. And, of course, there was some incredible UFC fights. I got messages all night long about who to, who to bet on. And I'm like, I don't, I don't bet UFC. No, you don't? No, I don't. Ever? I, I don't have know. you ever? Uh, I think I have once how, or twice. D how does that work in general? Well, it's either plus or minus, and then you can bet on the rounds, right? Like, so I think poor, uh, what was it, Portia? Okay, so how many rounds are there? Nine? Uh, championship fights, there's five. Five? Five five-minute rounds. The other ones, there's three, right? Oh. So if it's not a championship bout, there's okay. three rounds. And cool. um, there were some great fights this weekend. Like, what's his name from Houston? Fought the, uh, yeah, big dude, uh, he knocked it. He, Derek Lewis? Yes, Derek Lewis. He, look, we <laughs> Hey, I've interviewed him. Very Bam, nice guy. There you go. Derek Lewis, he actually uh, recorded the 17th KO, the most in UFC history. So he won. He looked in great shape, too. But then afterwards proceeded to take off his pants in the ring and tell his wife to get ready when he gets home. What? <laughs> I'm not joking. <laughs> this is not a joke. I've got to find this clip. Derek uh, Lewis did that. Yep. Oh, he's notorious for things like this. He he is a goofy guy. He he was trying to – so I interviewed him at a Sabercats game because I knew hosting and reporting out there. Yep. And I interviewed him on the sidelines for MLR. And he wanted to get out there on the field because there was a fight taking place among the players. <laughs> he wanted to get out there. And I'm like, you can't do that. I'm sorry, man. But he's a funny guy. I've I've got to hear this clip. Clip. I got to see it. Yeah, it's uh, it was pretty interesting. I look, I, Derek Lewis is a character, and they look, he's in the UFC. So good for him. He can do whatever he wants. Uh, <laughs> but those that's that's your fighting news for the uh, evening. Look, there's also some soccer news. The USA women's team is about to play here in a little bit, and they have to score a point in order to get out of this round, which is very interesting. They shouldn't be in this position. It's one of those weird ones in during the World Cup or oh, those those other tournaments where the team that's in the top needs to get that result in order to go through. Otherwise, they might just drop down the third. Looking at it, getting a point should be easy. Um, but it's one of those ones that it would be the biggest 
one of the biggest upsets of them not getting out the group Portugal. Stage. They play Portugal yeah. at 2 a.m. Central. So if you're up and out and about, if you're just getting home from the bars or clubs, then there you go. You can just watch it on. on a Monday night. <laughs> hey, man, look, uh, we used to have one of the biggest parties party. ever on Monday nights, man. We had 80s night at a place called Bronx Bar. I was on the microphone. I was the MC, and my buddy uh, DJ Biz was playing all the like all the 80s hits, and I was singing. I used to sing on the microphone while he played the tunes. It was a lot of fun. We had $1 Patron shots. Packed. Place was absolutely slammed on Monday. Packed? Night. Yep. Was this a college crowd? Yes. It's, oh, okay. It's right by okay, okay. <laughs> okay, because like my college hangout uh, was Thursdays. Uh, no, no, no. Sorry. Taco Tuesday See? at. I can't remember where it was, but we did karaoke too. It was fun. 2 a.m. Central. That's, that's, two, that's, that's nuts. That's two and a half, three hours before I actually get up to go to work. <laughs> it's like, New Zealand time. <laughs> Man, but yes, yeah, so the United States of America needs a point. Basically, they have to win, right? Or do you get a point if you tie? You, okay, you so get, you, get, you get a point if you tie. So that basically... I don't think they want to tie, though. They've been underwhelming. They, they have... I mean, they're going to go out and play their game, and the moment they score a goal, they might just sit back and just defense, defense straight out. Yep. Mm. They could do that. We'll see. All right, guys, uh, welcome into Sports with Balls. It, balls, if you're just now joining us, you can find... <laughs> The earlier part of the show on the podcast version, as soon as we get out of here, I will put it up on all your podcast arenas, Spotify, wherever, Apple, iTunes, Alexa, wherever you watch or listen to your podcast. Just type in Sports with Balls. Lauren and I will be on there. And uh, we were talking about earlier, the NFL news out of Indianapolis is absolutely unbelievable. What's going on there at camp over there? Do you have any news as far as the Texans training camp? Does it look like C.J. Stroud is going to be the starter and Davis Mills basically the mentor? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, that is what I'm hearing from reports from training camp here in Houston, Texas. I've heard C.J. Strout has been a stud thus far. And also that William Harris Jr., which the Texans traded up for in the draft, got. And that, that defensive unit is strong. And it's going to look completely different with D'Amico here after being the defensive coordinator in San Francisco for the past two years. I've just heard that like they collectively like things are looking very positive and very good out at Energy Stadium. I hear nothing but good things, which is great because And Derek Stingley <laughs> Jr., you know, yep. he's going to get a he's going to get a lot more playing time. He's going to look a lot better in general out there, I think. Just the, the last season, year before last of those those same guys, it's just complete turnover with the coaches. This is someone who has been in the league, who played for the Texans, has the experience of getting in the postseason, and D'Amico Ryan's coming here and coaching all these guys. It's just such a different feel and nothing but positivity. I don't think the city of Houston could have got past the Deshaun Watson saga any sooner. So it's been a nightmare. If, mm. if Look, if you're not a Houston Texans fan, I'm not massively a Houston Texans fan because of the organization. It's been kind of like in disarray for years and years and years and years. We're 20 plus years into this thing, and it's just been a nightmare with all the superstars that the Texans have had. Now, you finally get over this Watson thing. You finally get the coach that you want that used to play here and everybody absolutely adores. You finally get your number one pick and – and your quarterback that's not Deshaun Watson, we'll see what they can do. The expectations in Houston could not be higher. Mm -hmm. And the problem is in that division, well, at least in that division, the Indianapolis Colts is like a mess. <laughs> so when you're really going up against the Jacksonville Jaguars who have Trevor Lawrence and Travis Etienne uh, that are going to be really, really good. We'll see what the, two, what the Texans can do. They're not going to get rid of D'Amico Ryan's in one year. So he's got at least two, maybe three years to turn this franchise around. And I would think that you need to win two playoff games in three years. Oh, in three years. I thought you were saying this year. No, I was no, like, no. that's in, very in, ambitious. In three years, probably win two playoff games. I know. I mean, I even say like being at top of the division, winning, winning the AFC South. But you mentioned the Jacksonville Jaguars. You forgot the new guys that they just brought on to the Tennessee Titans. Yep. And, of course, adding Derrick Henry back if he stays healthy, stays healthy throughout the season. So, I mean, it's going to be those three within the division. But I really just see it being Houston and Tennessee. Uh, but that's all with, like we said, the positivity going into the season. You're taking Houston Tennessee. You think Houston and Tennessee, wins, wins, not wins. the Jaguars? I don't know. They won last year. I, I, I still... They were only 9 and 8, but... You've got to look at the competition, You don't think too. Trevor Lawrence is the, the, the real deal, huh? Uh, he was in college. He yeah. was in college. He had a decent year last year. Um, 
we'll see if what? he continues that. <laughs> but uh, you talk about the Houston Texans, and I was just going to say really quick before we move on, is I saw Bill O'Brien up in the uh, Patriots being, of course, reunited with Bill Belichick, saying nothing but good things about this guy. So it, it's, it's going to be, do uh, the Texans and Patriots face each other in Houston this season? I don't know. I have to look up their schedule and have it right in front of me. Okay, I, I okay. Know. I just thought I'd bring that up just because obviously Bill O'Brien got Houston top, I mean, five years in a row AFC South champs. And <laughs> we're talking about the Texans going into the playoffs. <laughs> well, if D'Amico Ryans can get in here and do that. Bill O'Brien is the most successful coach in the Texans history, and that will tell you all you need to know about why I do not really <laughs> root for the Houston Texans. Well, I like Gary Kubiak. <laughs> oh, man. Um, all right, go, go, Kubiak. Hey. <laughs> see, see, that's every um, Texan right there. Oh, oh. Uh, I got to thank a couple of people real quick. Want to thank West Dunn over at Weston uh, Roofing or Weston Construction Group. Call him for all your roofing needs and your exterior construction. WestonCG.com. That's W E S T I N C G.com. Or call him 832 534 237. Four, call him, give him a shout. And of course, Chris's Tailgate, where were you at right now? All five Houston area locations. Come get your drink on. There's about 40 TVs up here. They've got the fights on all the time. I think they were packed this weekend for the boxing matches and the UFC uh, fights of this past weekend that I told you about. Christian's Tailgate, order food off DoorDash. Uber Eats, wherever you get your stuff from. I need to get some tacos. I haven't had some in a while, but they're pretty good Tonight here. Tonight was steak night. I didn't even know that. Oh. Like my son ate a steak. Oh. I don't know. Great. And Cole? Very good. Uh, that's his favorite food. My son is eight and a half years old, and his favorite foods are medium, medium rare steak and blackened salmon. Good for you, Cole. I loved <laughs> blackened salmon. Bad I mean, for, loved. I love bad salmon. Bad for dad. That that kid's diet is so expensive. And macaroni and cheese, of course. So. Hey, he's just being <laughs> healthy. He's just being a healthy boy. Um, I heard that do not, do not, do not get farm-raised salmon is the worst type of farm-raised food for you. Just FYI. Have we figured out if it's still called Twitter? So I wanted to ask you guys this because last week when we did the show from home, it was a really fun situation because it literally just took place that day yeah. where they changed from Twitter to the X, whatever. Uh, how do y'all like it? Any differences? I mean, other than just the symbol, you know? Well, I heard the people don't like It's too bright. So the people. It's too in, bright. Yes, yeah, people in San Francisco. It's the same thing. No, no, no. The people, the actual logo on top of the building, people are complaining he's oh. got to turn it down. It's like all LED lights. And so uh, uh, he's in it, It's in San Francisco? It. Yeah, I think, I think it's San Francisco. Yeah, I thought so it was in all, Austin. Okay, because San Francisco, I, they got a lot of problems over there. Okay, <laughs> general. So right. uh, apparently pooping problems, homeless problems. They don't like to be homeless. They, it's called houseless. They will, will find you offensive if you call them homeless. All right. Um, just yeah, there's but a lot. There's be, a lot going in San Francisco. They don't have a home though, right? Right. Okay. But it's it's technically offensive. That's homeless. If you don't if you don't have gas, you say, it, "Oh, I'm not homeless. I'm houseless." Like that's I. All right. I don't know. All right. Uh, That's since, a San Fran Some other thing. news coming out of Jeppeson. The Cincinnati Reds are acquiring left-handed reliever Sam Mole from the Oakland A's for right-hander Joe Boyle. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, from insider training camp and Buccaneers camp, first-round defensive tackle Kalija Cansey has a calf strain. Like Joe Burrow, he'll miss time, but the expectation is week one is in play, barring any setbacks. That's pretty big. For Joe Burrow, like I said. Lions uh, tight end uh, Shane Zilstra is believed to have suffered a serious, significant knee injury. Ooh, man, that guy played good last year, too. He had more tests, or will have more tests, but there isn't a lot of optimis optimism. Zilstra burst into the national spotlight with three TDs versus the Panthers. Now expected to miss at least six months. So now the Detroit Lions are hitting the injury bug as well. Man. I mean, it happens. It happens. Yep. Training camp. I mean, it's the first of it for them coming back. On the uh, flip side of that, we're talking about breaking news. Justin Verlander, Astros are still having talks per Chandler Rome Ooh. of the Chronicle, per Ken Rosenthal of the MLB. <laughs> so uh, this was posted wow. four minutes ago. It looks like there's still those trade talks, those rumors happening. Is the V <sighs> going to be back in the H? Man. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say yes. I really am I, because I think he wants out. Uh, the, all the things that I mentioned earlier in this show, 
the Mets are moving on. They're moving on from a lot of th- stuff. Their, their pitchers are gone. DeGrom's out for the year. Max Scherzer just got shipped off. They're under 500. They're, it looks to be like they're selling, and they need some prospects. The Astros do have prospects. So I, I think here, the question is, what is Houston going to give up? I don't know if you give up Chaz. Exactly. No, no, no. You do not give up Chaz McCormick. I like I Chaz. I like Chaz. No, I like what he brings to the team. He's a talent. He really is a true talent. But I'm sure that's what they uh, want. So, uh... Per Bob Nightingale, yep. he says that the payment for Justin Verlander and his contract in general, he's being paid 43.3 mil this year, 43.3 mil next year, and 35 mil vesting option in 2025. Yep. So are the Astros even going to bark up that tree? Well, so that's, that's probably what they're – talking to New York about like hey you're going to have to take some of this contract because if you look at what Max Scherzer did Max Scherzer is actually getting paid by three different teams it's fantastic what he's doing he's getting, <laughs> it's like he's getting paid like 10 plus million dollars from three separate teams in one year he's getting checks from all three of these teams it's crazy so I'm sure that they want the Mets to take on a little bit of that we know the Astros are stingy we know like they, they'll go through it without Justin Verlander if they want to but at this point because of the run that the Astros have been on over the last seven seven years they want to get back to where they were and their fan base wants to get back to where they were and I believe that the owners and the GM do as well so they may be willing to make a little bit of sacrifice the problem is I'm pretty sure they want the Mets to take on some of that and I'm pretty sure the Mets want Chaz McCormick who's a huge trading piece in this I know he's got to be and I don't know if the Astros want to get rid of Chaz McCormick. I'm not saying that's exactly what's going on, but that's the rumors that I hear. Chaz McCormick wasn't in the lineup today. And you wonder if that has anything to do with the Houston Astros and the New York Mets. I, I don't know. He just had an appearance last night. Yeah, but not with today. With Ryan Presley. He's, he's out of the lineup today. When, when you get traded, it's that. Remember when they traded for uh. Uh, Bosquez last year? He literally went from the uh, Red Sox dugout to the Astros dugout that same game. So if you're out of the lineup one day... I think Yuli was ahead, too, of a game. Yeah, and, and it's just, man, it sucks for these players. But would you get rid of Chaz McCormick for Justin Verlander for two more years? I don't think he's worth this money. Uh, but you, Jason, is nodding his head yes yep. to win now. Jason? I would do that just for the, the push for this year. Yeah. I would do that for that. Because uh, I think uh, the Astros are stacked in our... Yeah, offensively, they, they've, they're okay. They've got... Plenty of uh, pop, you know. But they've got bats. Kyle but Tucker, yeah. Altuve's back. They do have pop. Yeah. Jordan. Back Chaz, at the Chaz H. is a fan favorite. I get it. Yeah. But if you're gonna get Verlander and that pitching, we eh. need pitching. Astros need <laughs> yeah, pitching. It's kind of like looking for now versus like yeah. the future. Yeah. Kind of thing. I, I would take it. Up. But I don't think it'll ever happen. I mean, that's just way too much money. Like you said, Jim Crane. Ah. Oh, Forty-three, forty-three, and thirty-five. Oh. Man, a lot of money. Yeah, that is a ton. Some other breaking news. The Dallas Cowboys, we had to bring them up one time during the show, will lose running back Ronald Jones suspended for two games for violating the league's PED policy. Two games. Shocker. Two games. Okay. <laughs> well, look, so Tony Pollard's obviously their starting running back. By the way, fantasy show coming up. When we'll see will Tony Pollard lands in our fantasy show in about two weeks. Watch him be on your roster. Oh, I, there was one year. That you are I, wearing blue. There Light was blue. there was one year when Tony Romo was still in the league that I had Tony Romo and Zeke Elliott and the Cowboys defense on my fantasy football team, and it just happened. I didn't realize Romo had, and Zeke were on the same. Yeah, I think Romo and Zeke, I think it was Tony. It was either Tony and Zeke or Tony and Emmett. Uh, but it was it was so obnoxious that I had to sit there and have the defense, the running back, and the quarterback from the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> Like, I was so upset about this, and I had to sit there and do it. Oh, but uh, because if they You just got to roll like, with like, who's the best at what of, position. Oh, and, of course, I didn't come close to winning. Like, come on, man. I remember, <laughs> so, so uh, my some of my family's from Dallas, and so whenever, obviously, Dak is still there, but in Houston, I'm like, oh, go Texans, but, like, I'll root for the boys, too, because I was raised on Cowboys. Um, but Houston through and through, well... D- uh, Deshaun Watson, Dak Prescott, both wore the number four, right? And so I'm like, oh, guys, what number four is better? What number four is better? And they all would say Dak, and I'm like, are you kidding me? I know, like, y'all are Dallas fans, but look at the talent. Come on now. You know Deshaun Watson is way better. He's he's more mobile. He can do more in general and in, inside and out of the pocket. Um, 
But, you know, they're just kind of washed, I guess, by them boys. Well, we'll see what happens. The trade deadline is about 23 hours away. The MLB, MLB. Trade, de MLB trade deadline, and we'll see if Juan Soto. There's rumors of that. There's rumors of Justin Verlander coming to Houston. There's all kinds of stuff on the trading block, and, of course, we'll keep you updated on Sports With Balls. Go to Sports With Balls on all of your social media uh, outlets right there. Just type it in, and we are there. We'll keep you updated if any breaking news happens. Uh, but other than that, man, you got any final thoughts here, Lauren? Final thoughts? Oh, we're already to the end of the show. Are you kidding me? No. No. Uh, it is National Hawaiian Flag Day. Okay. National Avocado. Do you have an avocado today? I don't like avocados. All right. Um, <laughs> Did you? <laughs> no. Uh, I should, though. I love avocados. Uncommon uh, Instrument Awareness Day, and this is for Jason. Jason, have you ever played, since you're in a band, a couple of them, have you ever, what's the most uncommon or weird instrument you've ever played? I tried to play a saw one time. A saw, like a like a yeah, saw, like a saw? a saw, like the movie. <laughs> <Saw>. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you use it. How do you 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 hold it and then you use like a a violin? You know, whatever. Did it work? It. Uh, I I couldn't really get it to go. I feel like that would just break the strings. Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> no. You, you, you play it on the other side. You you bend it and uh, it's kind of a kind of a country thing or a folky thing to Folk, kind of yeah. I can ha see that. have that sound going through. Try. I tried it. Did could could never get it to work. No. No. Okay. Uh, One that's, more that's thing. Uh, the Cubs I have acquired right-handed pitcher Jose Cuis from the Royals. I don't know either one of those guys. So there you go. Um, another on another note from the NFL and training camp, I saw Patrick Mahomes was asking about the dynasty that's taking place in Kansas City. He says, oh, you know, I don't consider it a dynasty because we have so much more to go. We're on a good path right now, which if you're in any franchise and you're winning, I, that's that's the mindset you got to have. It's not about today. It's about the future. We got to keep it going. So they going back again. Uh, they're in it. Super Bowl. Uh, <sighs> I keep it's them or the Bills when we're talking about the AFC. Yeah. What about you? It's so hard to get back. If he goes back again, the the Tom Brady stuff is already creeping in. If he goes back to the Super Bowl again, you you just have to be like, okay, this guy's heading towards being the greatest player that's ever played this game. It is ridiculous. But his his touchdown and his actual his his passing average has gone down for the last four years. So I'm not exactly sure. It's it's Kelsey, right? It's health. It's health. If him and Kel Kelsey can stay healthy and they can find a decent running back, I, I believe that, of course, they can they can do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. I, but I think that Andy Reid wins one more. I think Andy Reid retires. Mm. I think it's, Good call. And Good then, call. then you're going to have a question of like, okay, does Pat Mahomes want to get out of Kansas City? Mm -hmm. And that's where things turn very, very, very interesting for the Kansas City Chiefs. Because what if Andy Reid wants to leave and then you got Pat Mahomes going, well. I, I All right, let's pump here. the brakes. <laughs> let's pump the brakes. I just mentioned get ready. first day of training camp. That's what he had to say. It's not a dynasty. We got to keep it going in Kansas City with the Chiefs. But yep. uh, we are trying for the Texans to get there. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of cheers that went on for that one. Hey. All right, guys, listen. Thanks for watching Sports with Balls. Follow us, Jeff Michael underscore 422 on Twitter or X, whichever way you want to do it, or Lauren double underscore <laughs> Leo. Follow Sports with Balls on every single one of your social media outlets. Just type in Sports with Balls. And of course, the podcast will be up. If you missed any of the show, it'll be up uh, later on this evening and tomorrow morning for your enjoyment on your way to work while you're in the shower, whatever you got to do, man. So, uh, final thoughts, Lauren? Have a good week. And happy birthday to Mark Cuban, the owner of the Dallas Mavericks. It's his birthday today. Jason, Shark Tank. Jason, appreciate you. We'll see you guys next week. All right.